Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to my new video. It's Hypno here. I really hope you enjoy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be playing Classic Logbait in 2024. I really do think that Classic Logbait is gonna be making a comeback this season. It's just because that before the season, like Classic Logbait only had one good evolution, which is the Evo Knight. So now with the Evo Barrel coming out, Logbait actually has the second good Evo for the deck and he goes for the Little Prince. He wants to pop the ability when I go for the barrel, so I'll just lock the little prince so it's dead, so he can't pop the ability anymore. And he doesn't have anything for the barrel now, I think. Yeah, he has the bats, but that's really not going to do a great job for him at all. I have my princess, and yeah, he's going to be giving up right here, so GG's, and I'll see you guys in the next game. We in the next game right here against Royal, and... People have actually been playing Classic Logbait in the last season also, but you can't really exactly call it Classic Logbait because it had like a little change. People were playing without a spirit and they were playing with the Evo Skeletons instead of the spirit. So that deck is like the exact same Elixir cost as Classic Logbait, but at the same time it's not really like Classic Logbait because you're playing with the Evo skeleton Skeletons and without a spirit which makes it kind of different than classic logbait and he goes for an interesting void his lava hound still dies but i guess his pups will be connecting to my tower and kind of a unfortunate start for me because i went for my burrow first play with the electro spirit and he went lava first play which is really not ideal for me because yeah when they lava in the back you really don't want to go for a barrel to pressure them because they can just ignore that and set up a big lava push so kind of unfortunate timing for me right there that's what just what happens when people go lava first play and you go for something um at the moment yourself like you could just completely get destroyed in the first minute if you um yeah like a little bit unlucky or not careful so i'll go for my goblin gangs um and evo knight on the left because yeah as you can see he had to commit the skelly drags to my princess and he doesn't have anything good for this he has the um, Inferno Dragon and unf unfortunately the Void kills my Electro Spirit with the last Void hit. Otherwise that would have definitely been Tower right here because the Electro Spirit would have stunned the Inferno Dragon for a little moment and the Tower would have definitely fallen. I can just ignore the Inferno Dragon right here just cycling the log onto the Tower and that's actually gonna be Rocket range right here. I think Rocket does exactly 541 damage so that's gonna be quite nice right here. But I don't really want to finish off the tower with a rocket unless I really have to. So I'll set up my goblin gang in the back like this and I'll go for my knight in front. That's gonna pressure him quite a bit and I'll go for the evo barrel right here onto both lanes. So let's see what he does. Okay, he's just gonna be ignoring both sides. So I get very good damage on both sides. The right side is actually almost in rocket range too. I can just go for my knight right here to block the skeleton dragons and my go for my electro spirit. And I don't need to go for anything else against the balloon because the balloon is not going to be taking my tower. He still needs to go for a push onto the right lane. So yeah, as you can see, he has to drop the lava. But I can just go for my princess in the corner and let him take my tower. I just need to make sure I try I get the right side or the left side or the right side tower. And I can just rock it now. I know he can't go for anything good in the pocket right now. He has his evil barbs in cycle, so he might go for evil barbs balloon in the pocket, but... Okay, he doesn't do it. Okay, he's gonna go for it on the left, but I don't think that's gonna be working out for him because I have my Inferno Tower, Electro Spirit and Goblin Gang and he might be getting one hit onto my tower if he plays well, but there's no way he gets two shots onto my tower, so I can just rocket the tower and even with the Void spell he didn't get a shot onto my tower and the Evo Knight even took his tower. So yeah, GG's right here and I'll see you guys for the next game. We in the next game right here against Kubix and I have been testing out the Evil Goblin Barrel for quite a bit now so I can give you like my honest opinion on to the evolution and a lot of people have been saying that they feel like the Evo Barrel is completely useless and trash and I really do have a different opinion about that. Like against Dagger Duchess Tower, it's obviously not gonna be the greatest Evo just because Dagger Duchess Tower is very broken against the Goblin Barrel and at the moment everyone is playing the Dagger Duchess Tower so the Barrel Evo doesn't really get any value whatsoever. But the thing is, once new Tower Troops come out or 
just like the Dagger Duchess Tower gets nerfed and other towers are meta again, I feel like the, the, the Goblin Barrel will be very good because, yeah, if you have like the evil Goblin Barrel, the fake barrel coming down the lane, you can just go for a Ice Spirit, for example, to tank for your fake barrel. And if they ignore that, then the fake barrel will get like, I don't know how much damage it would get, but at least like 1000 or 1500 damage, maybe even more, like probably around 2000 damage. So yeah, and they still have to deal with the normal barrel on the other side, right? So against the Princess Tower, the evil barrel is very good. You just don't see the evil barrel being good at the moment because no one is playing the Princess Tower or the Cannoneer. So yeah, that's kind of unfortunate, but I really don't think that the evil barrel needs a buff because if the Dagger Duchess Tower gets nerfed, which it definitely will, the Evil Barrel will, will be very good in my opinion. So if you buff the Evil Barrel when the Dagger Duchess Tower gets nerfed also, then I feel like the Evil Barrel would, would be beyond broken because, okay, what is that rocket? I feel like he might have given up right here. Yeah, he goes for the Inferno Tower, so he definitely has given up. And yeah, like my final thoughts onto the Evil Barrel are that it's like... Not so good in the current meta, but once like the meta changes, it's definitely gonna be very good and viable. So GG's and I'll see you guys in the next game. We in the next game right here against Bruno Ferreira. <laughs> not too sure if I pronounced that right. I hope so. If not, I'm sorry. So, okay. He could be playing um, Princess Spam right here, but okay, I guess he's playing Expo, which makes sense. So I'll just rocket the Expo. The, the thing with the Expo deck is the Expo deck is like exactly the same deck like the Princess deck, but the only difference is that the people are playing the Princess instead of the Expo. Besides that, it's like completely the same deck, so it's kind of interesting to yeah see like two of the same decks with just like a different win condition. I mean, you can say that the Princess is not a win condition like the Expo is, but in my opin opinion, Princess is really a win condition because you can just drop it at the bridge to get damage onto the tower. So yeah, it's like exactly what a win condition does. It like gets straight damage onto the tower. The only difference to a win condition is that it doesn't just like target the tower straight like it doesn't ignore other things like the hawk rider the hawk rider just walks to a tower to the tower so it's like an obvious win condition which the princess is not but the princess is definitely still a win condition if you yeah just look at it and um, see how it gets damaged so kind of unfortunate um yeah that he's also rocket like being able to rocket cycle me if i was playing against expo with the fireball i would be looking a little bit better i feel like expo with the fireball is still they, their matchup if they play perfect because they can just fireball cycle me and there's nothing i can really do against that because if they catch my princesses i'm never really gonna get any damage and it's not really hard to catch princesses if you play well and i can't rocket cycle him because he's just gonna be spamming me with expo so he can rocket me, but I can never really rocket him back. So I'll go for my barrel to the side to maybe get one shot onto the tower. Okay, he just goes... Wait, what is that ability? That really didn't make any sense, man. He's going for the right lane, but he pops the ability and he even still goes for the rocket. So, man, I really didn't understand that ability. That really didn't make any sense. And he's definitely gonna expo with the Evo Tesla now. So I have to go for my Inferno Tower low. I didn't have any other choice. Um, then rocketing his tower because I'm just gonna fall behind in damage and he's just gonna defend all game and throw more rockets at my tower and I can't do anything to catch up the damage. I have to rocket him back. I have no other choice. I need to get my goblin gang down fast right here. Okay, I got the ga goblin gang down so I don't need to um, put anything else to defend the expo and I can just rocket as well right here. So that was a very nice defense because I managed to defend the um, expo without my rocket and I also like uh, he wasted his evo tesla and it really didn't get him any value because I defended my his expo with my cards low like I did there so I'll just go for my princess to start sniping the little prince and I only need to play my electro spirit to get back to the rocket so that's what I'm gonna do right here he has to do the same thing because if he doesn't and I defend well I'm gonna be up one rocket and then I'll definitely win so it's kind of like whoever has like a big damage lead of like 500. 500 damage is already a big damage lead in this matchup. 
And whoever has that will definitely win if they play well. I'm just gonna rock it right here and that's what I'm talking about. That's what I meant with the ability last time. Like, that ability didn't make any sense. He has to play normal cards to cycle back to his rocket faster. Because if he pops the ability, he doesn't cycle with that. And at the same time, like, he uses three elixir that he could use to cycle, right? So that's just a horrible ability right there. I really don't know why he would do that. And now I can just rocket his tower. I know I need to get back to one more rocket to win the game. And I have my Evo Knight in cycle, so I don't have to be worried at all because... The Evo Knight basically tanks for like a million years to be honest. So yeah, just gonna rocket the tower right here and that's gonna be GG's. I feel like I played very well um, with the defenses overall. So yeah, I'll see you guys for one more game. We in the final game for today against Musan and I always like to go for my Goblin Barrel first play to be honest with this deck. Just so I can get to my Evo Goblin Barrel as fast as possible and... I know that people can defend the Goblin Barrel for just one elixir if they have the Dagger Duchess Tower, but that's completely fine by me because I know if I go for the Barrel first play, no matter what play they do, they're most likely not gonna be able to punish me for my Barrel, so why not go for the Goblin Barrel first play if you can get to your evil Goblin Barrel with that and you know that they're not gonna be able to be punishing you. So interesting Little Prince and interesting Zap from him. I think that he tried to... Um, yeah, kill the Inferno Tower with the Little Prince, but I guess he didn't know that the Little Prince is not able to reach the Inferno Tower from there, so not the greatest Little Prince from him. I can just go for my Goblin Barrel plus Electro Spirit once again, and I'll go for my Knight to the side so the Bandit doesn't charge to my tower. He goes for a pretty good Electro Wizard, to be honest. I could just go for my Princess in the opposite lane right now, but I'll just wait because I feel like in this matchup it's not really too worth it to be going for two lanes. I kind of just want to focus on one lane to be honest and I'll just be, yeah, I'll just use my evil goblin barrel right here to be honest. I know it's not going to do anything on the left side, but as I said, I'm focusing on one side only. So very nice goblin barrel damage I got right there and look at the ghost. It didn't even hit anything. It's still invincible. So it did exactly nothing. <laughs> so that's always kind of funny when the ghost wants to hit something, but... Then the tower kills the troop that the ghost wanted to hit, so the ghost doesn't hit anymore and stays invincible. So yeah, my troops lock onto his tower because the ghost stays invincible. Always a kind of funny interaction and I'm gonna be giving him the good game right here and the like giving up white flag. Just because from this point on, I feel like there is not, not a lot of things he could do to come back this matchup. I just have to play clean defense and there's nothing he can do to be honest. He goes for the Pekka in the back, which is fine by me. I'll go for my Princess in the back and then pressure him with the gang. I could pressure him with the Princess instead of the gang, but I want to pressure him with the gang because I know he could defend that, but my Princess would clean up everything he would defend that with. And if he defends that, I would still be up like a lot of damage and he couldn't be focusing on offense if he defended that. So there would be no way for him to break through. Even with him ignoring everything, he's still not going to be able to break through. So yeah, that was very well played right here. That's going to be GG's. He gets one Guardian shot onto my tower, but nothing he can do. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Playing Classic Lockbait in 2024 and actually going to be playing it a little bit more the next days. Because it's very fun to play and I missed it a lot. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys for the next video tomorrow. Bye!